Let's think about the two biggest space games we have in our lives. Knights of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2. Did I get it? No Man's Sky and Star Citizen, right? Okay, that was close. I was close enough. Been a while since I did a video response, huh? It's weird. It's, just, it's actually kind of weird coming back and doing one of these again. And what do both of these games have in common besides being in space? Uh, they have the word star in the name. Wait, no they don't. They were both dog shit for the first five years of their release. And now, they're trying to sell me Skyrim in space. Wait, Star Citizen's not out. Just before we go any further, this video is called So Starfield is Doomed. It's about a month old. It's got a beautiful like to dislike ratio. It's from one of these channels that just talks negatively about every game ever. And as someone who's like cautiously you know, interested in Starfield. I like listening to criticism. I, I like listening to what other people are cautious about. I have my own cautious, you know, preemptive criticisms of this game, or my, my, uh, I guess I shouldn't call them preemptive criticisms. I should call them, you know, my uh, concerns, my, what I consider to be f founded concerns. And is that what this video had? No. Literally, that's what the founder called it himself. Made by Bethesda, by the way, who hasn't been able to release a successful product in over 10 years. Yeah, no, there hasn't been a successful Bethesda game in the last 10 years. Uh, for, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. You know, other than Hi-Fi Rush and Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop and Prey and Evil Within and Evil Within 2 and Doom and Doom Eternal and Elder Scrolls Online and Quake 2 Remastered. No, Bethesda hasn't released a good game in 10 years, didn't you know? So if you're blindly hyped for this game, you've been bamboozled. If you're blindly shitting on this game, you've been bamboozled. Which, you know, I, you and I are both in the same boat. Neither of us have played the game yet, but only one of us opened our video by comparing it to No Man's Sky. Tricked. Skanked. But guess what? You came to this video. You're in a safe place now. I will save you. By showing you how Skyrim in space, also known as Starfield, is completely doomed. Let's get into it. And I will save you by making your content better. You're welcome. Now, before I even get into the various reasons why Starfield is more doomed than your local GameStop. My local GameStop's been doing pretty well, actually. Which is completely irrelevant to the video, but just a, a weird side note. My local GameStop has been popping. I don't know why. Let me first lay out the primary reason that I'm worried. It seems the developers don't really know what the fans are looking for in this new IP. Really? That's interesting. You think Bethesda doesn't know what fans are looking for in a new IP? Which is why they've delayed it five million times to take community feedback into account and why there's a whole bunch of hype around what they've shown off. This is kind of a hard sell, but go on. For example, just a small feature, Todd Howard confirmed that there will be no seamless ground to space flight. That basically means if you're on the planet's surface and you fly up into the air, there will be a loading cutscene before you're able to get to space, making the transition a lot less smooth. Yeah, that's a little lame. I mean, I, I know I'm not the only one who would love to be able to just manually do that shit, but if that relatively very small segment of gameplay has to be sacrificed for the scale of the game, I think it's understandable. You know, you gotta make compromises somewhere, and at the end of the day, freely taking my ship from ground to space, or just assuming that it happened in a, behind a load screen, like, yeah, that's not, that's, I'd like... Hot take, that's really not that big of a sacrifice to me. Okay, right? I mean, that's not the end of the world. It's not that catastrophic. That's one feature. It's Todd Howard's explanation for why it's not in the game that scares me. He said this feature is not important enough to the player to justify it being engineered into the game. Why did you just use footage from like Avengers Endgame in your background there? But anyways, yeah, the point Todd Howard makes here, which is a good one, is that the amount of development work and the amount of technical work that would have to go into making seamless takeoff and landing possible would not really benefit the player enough to justify, you know, cutting corners elsewhere. There's more important things to put development time into. Which, like, yeah, you and I can absolutely agree that it's lame, that there's, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly a little disappointing that there's not going to be seamless takeoff and landing in Starfield. But, again, I'm perfectly happy to assume that my ship took off and landed successfully if it means the rest of the game is at the scale that we've been told it will be at. I just think it's kind of weird that this is the thing you're harping on. You're, the title of your video is Starfield is Doomed, and you know, I have these reasons why Starfield is doomed, and if you're hyped for this game, you've been completely duped. And Bethesda doesn't know what people want from a new IP because there's no seamless 
takeoff and landing? Question mark? Like, that's all you got? I swear, like, yeah, there's a lot of people who want to blindly love this game before it comes out, but there's also a lot of people who want to blindly hate on it or blindly dismiss it. And I, I gotta say, those people are weirder because you guys are the ones stretching further. He's basically saying that the development time for it isn't fucking worth it. And I don't believe that statement is true at all. I think it's pretty important for an open world exploration game with over a thousand planets to have this seamless ground to space feature. Yeah, open world exploration, exploration of the planet. That's the that's the important part. That's the important part of the game. The exploration of the planet. How are you missing this? Yeah, again, you and I can agree that it's lame there's no seamless takeoff and landing, but you just said that's not the that's not the main core of the experience. But clearly he doesn't see it that way. And that makes me question what else doesn't he see that way? It's funny, you're going on and on about how Bethesda doesn't know what people want from Starfield, but like, do you know what people want from Starfield? Because to me, this sounds like just another person comparing it to No Man's Sky. Because something, something, ooh, they're both space games. What else does Starfield think isn't important when it really is? 60 FPS on console. See, there's an actual criticism you could have made. Or mod support at launch. Another criticism you could have made. But no, we're going to talk about the, f the fucking loading screens. Really? I want you to think about that as we go on through this video. Now, we all remember when No Man's Sky first came out, and it was a complete fucking lie. I still think it's funny to this day how they literally said, yeah, the game's gonna have multiplayer, and it just didn't. I mean, like, how do you get away with shit like that? Yeah, no, No Man's Sky was a complete lie. It was a complete flop, and it deserved to flop because it was a complete lie. It's also an entirely different kind of game than Starfield. The, the comparisons between Starfield and No Man's Sky begin and end with the fact that they are set in space on multiple planets. Like, that's it. This is a bad comparison. But anyway, No Man's Sky advertised millions of planets to explore, endless possibilities on all of them. And on paper, that sounded really cool. The galaxy was fucking infinite. I mean, that's dope. But that fun lasted for about 29 seconds. So you agree that the game was too big for its own bridges and probably would have benefited from a bit of scaling back and refining of the core vision and core experience? Hmm. Because five seconds ago, that was a bad thing. People quickly realized that the planets, despite being named different things, were all just reshades of the same shit. Somehow, this game being so full of planets made it so empty. And that was a big problem people had with that game. So Starfield, it has 1,000 planets. Don't get me wrong, that's a lot better than a million, but that's still just too many to justify having. I mean, yeah, it's not surprising to me that you think that when you also seem to fundamentally misunderstand what this game is again comparing it to no man's sky it's starting to sound to me like you just want an open world game which is like okay play any other bethesda game then i just i just don't get why they won't focus on 120 planets really craft those planets add specialties to all of them that would make the game feel perfectly huge while also being purposeful oh no i i was right you actually do just want a smaller game okay then Listen, when most people buy this game, you are not going to explore more than 45 planets. The average player. Where are you getting that from? Like, I, I can say that about anything. I can, you realize, I can say that about literally anything. Oh, Spider-Man 2, th that map is going to be twice as big as the first game. Uh, you know, only like 30% of players are going to explore every building in that game. It's too big. Like, what? Also, am I the only one who finds it a little bit ironic that you were talking positively about No Man's Sky and Star Citizen and, like, the scale of those games? Like, oh, they're these big, big space games. They're the biggest space games. But now you're like, oh, the average Starfield player is not even going to explore all the planets. You get what I'm saying here? You, you take space games. You take positive examples of space games. And then you're like, oh no, people don't want big space games. Then why'd you bring up big space games? Nevertheless, 200, 300. So why not make it 100 planets that when someone goes there, it's special and not some procedurally generated shit? But what about No Man's Sky? Never mind. Not only that, but the planet exploration is weak, man. You literally haven't played it. No rovers. No, no, no rovers? In fact, no vehicles at all. There's no ground transportation at all in this game. Yeah, that's kind of lame. I'll give you that. That part's kind of lame. This is the kind of thing you probably should have put earlier in the video because it's an actual criticism. You are going to be walking everywhere on foot. I guess the rumors are true. Bethesda doesn't know how to code fucking vehicles. Never in any of their games have they made you drive a car. Why would you drive a car in other Bethesda games? Like, like genuinely, the, the setting of other Bethesda games, w which of them would fit a car? Although I do think this is kind of funny to bring up because obviously you don't drive cars in Elder Scrolls, and you don't drive cars in Fallout, but it's not like that many people complain about the ground transportation of those games. 
Like, it's like, again, we can agree that there are missed opportunities, but also, like, it's not like, it's not like the lack of ground vehicles automatically means the open world traversal is going to be really boring or shitty, because you ju- you just brought up other Bethesda games. So, like, what? You keep doing this thing where you come really close to making a valid criticism and then just fucking flying off into space behind a loading screen because there's no manual takeoff so no ground transportation there are rumors that on each specific planet there are boundaries as to what you can explore so it's not just an infinite planet surface that you can walk around on forever oh so now infinite surfaces are okay got it there are limits to the directions that you can go you add the fact to that that there's no seamless ground to space transitions the exploration is already going to be super fucking choppy it sounds to me like you just don't want this game to be good is that fair to say because first big space exploration games were a-okay but this exploration game is not a-okay and then big lots of planets with lots of exploration is too much they should have focused on smaller areas they should focus on smaller areas but then when you get what you want oh this is it this this isn't good there's no exploration because the area is too small yeah, I gotta tell you, bro, this is fucking weak. You wanna talk about fucking weak? This is fucking weak. I'm three and a half minutes into your video and I'm already tapping out of this because you've made your you've made your mind up, you know? And I don't mean to sound like a blind Starfield defender because I think there's plenty of things in this game to criticize. Personally, I don't like the art style. I think it looks kind of lame. I think the shooting looks average at best and I think it's going to make combat really repetitive. And yeah, if the game is running at 30 frames per second on the Series X with no option for 60 FPS, that makes me wonder how good the PC version's gonna run, because that affects me. Preemptively praising games is dumb, but preemptively criticizing games from a completely stupid angle is dumber. Anyways, let me know if you want me to do more video responses again. I used to do these a lot, and then I stopped. I don't, I don't know why. I just didn't do, I just haven't done one for a while. Um, yeah, toodles.